Has the Black Lives Matter movement of the past year changed Hollywood's approach to inclusivity? Has there been an increase in black representation across all touch points of the creative process? Joining me in this discussion is our pop culture expert, Kathleen newman Bermang, and publicist and author, Dalton Higgins. I love that you both are joining me today. Kathleen, I'm going to start with you. So would you say that you've seen a change in Hollywood's approach to inclusivity? Are we seeing more representation? What do you think? I mean, I think whether we're seeing more representation and whether Hollywood has changed its approach are two different questions. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, we are seeing more black representation on screen, but I think that a lot of it is still focusing on Band-Aid solutions and that are more in front of the camera than behind, more individual than systemic. So yeah, you know, we're seeing shows adding more diverse characters and maybe they're starting to talk about anti-black racism on screen a bit more. But the question should be, who's in the writer's room? Who is in the director's chair? Who is actually getting to create these shows? You know, there are the exceptions, some of my favorites, Insecure, Atlanta, I May Destroy You, Queen Sugar, which are all run by black creators. But Hollywood, in Hollywood, 91% of showrunners are white and 80% are male. So there is still a major lack of inclusion behind the scenes. But that said, you know, I think we are seeing some change, hopefully, and I think that change is being sparked uh, by these new conversations we're having. Um, and the catalyst was the Black Lives Matter movement in the past year. Um, there's the Inclusion Writer, which is, was created by two women of color, Fanchon Cox and Kalpana Kotagal. Celebrities like Frances McDormand and Michael B. Jordan, my future ex-husband, they've already <laughs> started using Inclusion Writers in their production. So that's a tangible step forward. And that's what I want to see more from Hollywood instead of just the rhetoric or, you know, putting Black Lives Matter in their bios. I want to see more of this tangible change. I just love that you've already done the marriage and the divorce with uh, Michael B. Jordan. So good. <laughs> Dalton, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, my thoughts are, you know, you know, change is a process, right? It's not a moment. Um, so I, I think it's still too early to tell, you know, just what the what the impacts as far as, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter adjacent uh, media activisms are and will be. Um, you know, I'm one of those strong proponents, uh, proponents for uh, race based statistics. I want to see statistics. I want to see hard data, uh, which suggests that things have uh, that there's been a seismic shift. Um, what I will say, too, is um, when we talk about power and, you know, power brokers that happen to be black or racialized, um, it, it is interesting to me that if you look at someone like Tyler Perry, uh, Tyler Perry Studios, he has this massive, uh, you know, the largest, um, uh, you know, minority owned studio in, in America. And uh, but he still has to go through uh, Viacom and and, uh, and Lionsgate to get his films distributed. Right. So, um, you know, hopefully we can also start talking a bit more about uh, just just real power and controlling the means of production and distribution. For sure. OK, can be back to you. In the past, Hollywood has often reduced the black identity uh, to a monolithic experience. So lots of slave dramas, lots of white savior storylines, lots of black pain, lots of black trauma. Are we seeing that change to include the full humanity and nuances of black people and experiences? Yeah, I mean, this is a great question, Tracy. We have absolutely seen an overwhelming amount of stories that focus on black, black pain and black trauma, especially here in Canada. But what I think is important in this discussion is to distinguish that not all depictions of traumatic black experiences are bad necessarily. It's how they are depicted. And if the pain feels like the focus or the priority, you know, is there a reliance on what has been deemed trauma porn? And that means that uh, that pain exists just for the sake of it, you know, for entertainment, for gratuitous reasons. We saw that with the Amazon series Them, which was just brutal and excessive. But then there's Barry Jenkins, The Underground Railroad, which is a beautiful and well done retelling of a really painful part of black history. And it is a show that is very about uh, or traumatic history, but it doesn't feel exploitative. And them is the opposite. So I think the problem is more about which stories are greenlit. And it seems like studios seem to only want the black trauma stories and the ones with white saviors, as you mentioned, Tracy. 
And I do think we are seeing it change a little bit because of black creators. You know, black creators are at the forefront of this change. That gives me hope that we will be seeing more projects about the full humanity of the black experience and not just pain and trauma. Yeah, we love to see it. And Dalton, let's let's continue on this whole trajectory of creators. Who are some black leaders or creators in entertainment disrupting the status quo? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting that, um, you know, before uh, pre-George Floyd, um, you know, there there are a bunch of uh, actually uh, black and racialized, uh, you know, um, people working in the industry that are have been disrupting. Um, you had people like, uh, you know, Byron Allen, for example, you know, he owns um, Entertainment Studios. And he's been sort of rallying sort of, uh, you know, strongly anti-racism as far as uh, distribution of uh, television projects. And I think, you know, just further to Kathleen's point, I think when you talk about it's black ownership, I think that's, uh, I want to, hopefully we can shift the debate there because, uh, you know, when I hear things like, you know, Issa Rae, she signed a, just signed a five-year deal with Warner Media. Um, you know, I referenced Tyler Perry. These are the types of uh, stories that, that, that excite me perhaps a little bit more because, uh, you know, when you, uh, when you sit in the, when you own the means of production, you know, and, uh, you know, you can now hire lead actors, writers, directors, that, you know, that happen to, to look like you, that are you, and understand the, you know, the cultural subtleties and nuances. And I, I want to continue sort of down that road of if we are in the ownership position, we might be better about, uh, you know, fleshing out those nuances. And I want to talk about colorism, because with increased representation, uh, we are still seeing colorism. And K and B, I'm going to ask you just maybe to expand on that. Well, maybe I should ask: Are we still seeing colorism? I know we are. We are absolutely, you know, Netflix, for example, has a huge colorism problem. And, you know, I come on this show regularly and I recommend Netflix projects. So it's unfortunate uh, to say because I do love so many of the shows that I'm about to mention as examples. But the main black girl characters on the following Netflix original shows are all played by light skinned actresses on my block. Ginny and Georgia. Never have I ever. Outer Banks. Riverdale. I could go on. You know, you look at the new Gossip Girl reboot. It is very diverse, which is exciting, considering how white the original project was. But every single actress of color could pass the paper bag test on that show. Bridgerton is another example. You know, I think Hollywood is using the presence of a certain kind of blackness, a light, palatable, as adjacent to whiteness physically as they can get to pat themselves on the back for doing the bare minimum. You know, we're still not seeing any real interrogation of these mainstream Eurocentric beauty standards. Dalton, I'm going to give you the last word on this one. Where do we need to go from here? Because you're right, it's only been a year. Uh, it's not a, a lot of time for us to see real substantial uh, change. But where do we need to go next to get there? It's non-black, um, you know, icons and, and, and major figures that need to be sort of calling out Hollywood studios, uh, television studios, and calling for, uh, you know, major correction and to work out of a sense of urgency. Um, Tom Cruise just did that, and what happened? The Golden Globes just canceled their awards for 2022, all right? More non-black uh, and non-racialized uh, major figures need to be calling, you know, holding Hollywood uh, to account. And I think that's when you're gonna see the real change, because we're a little bit tired. We've been doing this for many years, decades, and um, yeah, we need some support from our uh, allies here. Yeah, a lot tired. Thank you, Kathleen and Dalton. Uh, great conversation. Keep that conversation going at home for sure. I appreciate both of you.